And welcome, everybody. Appreciate you taking a little time out of your day to spend with us here to talk about profit, one of the things that I am the most passionate about. So let's just jump right into it. So Gary Keller tells us that the number one mistake that agents make is focusing on production before focusing on profit. So in Profit Camp, we actually explore um, and focus on four things. Picking your profit, building a performa or a business plan, filtering those daily decisions that you're making through that performa, and then reviewing your financials every single month. And we always start by creating a life by design rather than a life by default. So I like that saying that life is not happening to you. Life is actually happening for you. And you're actually in, in control of the life that is that, that you're living, right? All right, so let's let's start with this. Why did you even get into real estate to begin with? Is it to, to have a different life, to have a bigger life? Maybe it's to take away some of the limitations on your earning potential. So my question is, is how do you know if you're winning at that bigger life if we don't have specific financial targets that support our hopes and our dreams. So often when I ask agents, um, what is your goal for 2024? Typically the answer I get is what they want to close in volume. And that just makes my stomach churn because that's the reason that we hear volume is because it's the biggest, fanciest, most impressive number. Um, or they'll tell me what they want to close in, in units. Almost never do I ever hear, well, my goal for 2024 is to, for instance, um, fully fund my retirement account or make enough so that my significant other can uh, quit their job or invest into a market center or uh, buy new investment properties, things like that. When I ask them what's important about their, their volume or that, that number of units that they tell me, most often they don't actually have a good reason. Um, it, I'll hear something like, well, it's it's more than I did last year, or maybe even, well, my coach told me you know, to increase my production by 20% 20, 20 next year. My, my question then is, well, is that what you want? Is that what you need? Do you need to close that much in volume? Do you need to close that many transactions? If you increased your production, and make more profit, what specifically will you be doing with that profit? So increasing your production is not a bad thing. And yet if there's no why behind it, I can almost all but guarantee that they're not going to hit those numbers. So we got to know where we're going and why you're actually going there. The life that you're living is the one that you've created. And the power is within you to change it if you want to change that direction. So do you have profit goals? What specifically do you want to make a profit for? And are you purposely taking money out every single month in order to fund those profit goals? So in Profit Camp, we go over, <coughs> excuse me, what we call our life by design form. Once you have completed this document, you're going to know exactly how many transactions that you or your team need to close in a, in a given year to fully fund your profit goals, to pay all of your personal expenses and all of your business expenses. And I'm telling you, I have witnessed lives changed just by understanding and filling out this form because of the clarity it brings to us. So one of the things that we're going to focus on once you have that clarity, then is, of course, the activities, taking a look at your lead measures and your lag measures. The lead measures are those activities, the things that you're doing that are giving you the results, which are known as your lag measures. So we really want to interrogate what are you what what is it that you're doing or need to do that will give you the results that you actually are wanting? Or maybe what are you not doing? that if you started to do would increase your production to cause that gross commission that you're needing to make in order to pay all of your personal, your business and your profit goals. What are you still doing that you've done in the past that actually isn't working anymore in today's market? As Gary Keller states that um, we all need to quit taking advice from each other or from others in your market center or others that you see on stage and such, 
unless you've actually seen their profit and loss statement. Because there's a lot of agents out there giving advice. I see, you know, reels and videos and quotes and all sorts of things on social media. They're giving advice, you know, from all sorts of different agents and teams. And quite frankly, um, they have dismal profit in their business. So let's be really careful who we're actually taking that advice from. They're going to tell you what doesn't work anymore, what does work. Um, I just had a conversation with an agent yesterday that was newer in the business. And he said that agents in his market center were telling him, don't go door knocking. Don't go circle prospecting by door knocking. That doesn't work anymore. That's a thing of the past. People are super freaked out by strangers just randomly knocking at their doors. And I was like, really? What evidence do they have to support that? Because there are hundreds of agents that have gotten back to, you know, for instance, door knocking and having tremendous results or open houses. Oh, open houses don't work. That's kind of a thing in the past. Well, again, really? Why, why is it that I coach teams that on average get one or two real buyer leads out of their open house program? So just be really careful on who is advising you because oftentimes that comes with a price tag. We are, we're now in a skills market. And I think that, you know, not all of you here on this call, but you probably know of agents that kind of got lazy about skills, especially in 2021, 22, we were in a market that quite frankly, anybody could have sold a house. And agents tend to get soft during those times. They quit practicing their scripts, their dialogues. They quit calling their database because after all, I have more business than I can actually even handle right now. So we really want to focus on getting back to the fundamentals if we have strayed away from those. In this market, we all need to take a stand for every single dollar that you earn. And in Profit Camp, we take a look at our what we call our spend rate. The spend rate is the, the spends that we make without thinking about it. You know, a little five bucks here, 25 bucks there. I mean, you can't get out of Panera without dropping at least, you know, 15 bucks. I guess you can't even get a cup of coffee, cup, cup of coffee at Starbucks for anymore for even start at Starbucks for five bucks. And all of these tiny little spends add up and reduces your profit. Uh, there's a gentleman that I, I did a little coaching with to figure out, he was like, felt like he's just living check to check to check. And when we looked at where is his tiny little spends, a bag of chips here, a soda there, a coffee here, um, a sandwich there, what he found out is that he had no idea the, the role of that and what he was spending on just kind of frivolous um, at, at the, the moment he wanted it kind of purchases not planned for, he was almost spending as much as he was in groceries. Um, on a monthly basis. So I want us to think like business owners. There are no successful businesses out there that don't have a plan for the entire year and that don't review their, their financials every single month to see if they're on track. They also have profit plans built into their business plan. When you review your financials every single month, it allows you to quickly know if uh, if a pivot is needed, do we need to change something? Do we need to pull back? Do we need to maybe spend a little more? What's working? What's not? Where could you cut? Or where maybe do you need to spend? Can you afford that next leverage person rather than I feel overwhelmed and I don't want to do this part of my job anymore. So I'm just going to go hire somebody. We actually want to have plans for those. Now, there are countless businesses that fail every single year. Here's a sobering fact. According to the National, uh, or I'm sorry, according to the Small Business Association, and I quote, the failure rate of businesses show that about around 20% fail in their first year, and only half of those businesses are still standing after five years. There are certain startups, however, that tend to have a 90% failure rate, and this statistic has become the norm, end quote. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because as real estate agents, uh, per the Small Business Association, you are a small business owner. So to protect your endeavor as a small business, you must have a plan. 
a plan that includes the organizational model. What are the activities that we actually need to do to, to hit our goal? A lead generation model for the year. How are we going to develop the leads, contact our database, stay in touch with people, add more people to our database? get into more relationships. You need to have a business and a personal budget as well as your organizational model plan. Do we need certain people um, or certain seats on the bus to be filled in order to hit some of the goals that we have? Because without these, you are potentially setting yourself up for failure, a failure of your small business. In Profit Camp, um, we teach how to start with profit and end with, with expenses versus my profit is what hopefully is left over after I pay all of my expenses and I pay for everything else. We're also going to create a very specific plan as to what you intend to do with that profit that you're making. So I encourage you to think like a smart business owner. Know where you are and where you want to go and then make a plan that's actually going to support this goal, which is exactly what we do in Profit Camp. So one of the most powerful exercises that we do in Profit Camp that everybody hates um, and yet is incredibly eye-opening is determining where your money's going right now. So remember earlier when I said that um, in Profit Camp, we create a personal and a business budget. Well, in order to do so, the first thing that you have to figure out is where is your current spending or your current spending habits, both in business and personal. So if you're going to go to Profit Camp and you want to do some homework to kind of get ahead of next week's Profit Camp course, this is what I suggest. Let's start by looking at your personal budget. And in order to do this, you need to get out the last 12 months of your bank statements, credit card or debit statements, and then go through it line by line, every single thing on there and mark it the best you can what the spending was for. Was it for groceries or mortgage or the veterinarian bill or HOA or alcohol or eating out or entertainment and clothing, et cetera? Once you've tagged everything, add up how much you're spending in each category. This is going to give you a really clear view as to where your money is actually going. Take a hard look at your spending. And are you okay with that? Is it too much going out in certain areas, maybe to eating out or DoorDash or clothing, et cetera? Do we maybe actually need to spend a little more in certain areas? Now, now take the totals when you've added it all up, divide it by 12. And right now, that's how much on average you're spending in each of these, these line items per month. Now, I know that there's things like your HOA or you don't the, the dog, you don't you don't take your dog or your cat to the vet every single month. Yet this is how much you should be putting away each month so that you have the funds to pay that vet bill versus just sticking it on a credit card. So now that you have the month amounts, if you make no changes whatsoever, this is now your monthly budget for the year. This is how much that you need to bring home to keep the lights on, food on the table, shoes on the kids, things like that. So take a hard look at these numbers and see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. Could we cut the, the like for instance, the, the grocery bill, even if it's just by $50 a month, right? Could we cut a little bit out of what we're spending on clothing, or whatever those things might be, just take a hard look at it because you deserve, I mean, you, we are working so hard in this industry right now. You deserve to know where every single one of your dollars is actually going. And I'm mean, encourage you don't cheat yourself by not doing all 12 months worth because chances are there's things that you maybe only pay for like once a year. And if you don't look at all 12 months, you might actually miss that thing. Also, as you're doing this and you're going through it and you're like, oh, that was a weird one off. I'll never have that again. So I'm just not going to include that. We will all always have weird one offs. So plan in advance for this, whatever we want to call it, emergency fund, weird one off fund, whatever that might be, because I, I know that every year something creeps up that we were not expecting. So include that as well. Now, here's the new habit that you might need to form. Do not fund your lifestyle with debt. 
Don't fund your lifestyle by putting it on the credit card and hoping to be able to pay it off later. That's the, the reason that we have so much debt in America is exactly that. I'm going to put it on the credit card and I'll figure out how to pay it later. Create a budget. Put the money away for those purchases that you want to make and do not purchase them until you've actually saved enough for them. There's a couple things that this is going to do. First, you will not go into debt to fund your lifestyle. Second, it takes away that instant gratification or reward. And finally, you might find that once you have the funds to pay for that item, you might not actually really want or need that any longer. There's a client that I coach that he and his wife did this to buy a house. They saved and saved and saved and saved to put down the, the money on the new house that they wanted until they had the funds to do so. And once they had enough funds, they realized they didn't really want that other house anyway. By delaying their gratification, they realized that those funds would be better spent on updating their current home to increase the value of it. And then after a couple of years, sell that current home so that they can buy the real house that they want to live in for maybe 10 or 20 years versus that in-between house while we're having kids, but they're not out yet, things like that. I am convinced that instant gratification is one of the biggest problems that we have in America when it comes to finances. We want that endorphin hit that we're willing to throw caution and logic to the wind. We want to we want to maybe stay up with the neighbors or the other agent that's in the office. And I just let me be abundantly clear. No one is in it as impressed with your personal possessions as much as you are. We've all met that person that wants to make absolute certain that we know what kind of a car they drive or where they shop for their clothes or where they went on vacation, et cetera. We might find that um, we're impressed with their business accomplishments that allows them to do those kinds of things, but we're really not impressed with those things, those new fancy shoes they have or handbag or outfit or whatever it might be. Jealous perhaps, but rarely impressed with that. So again, Nobody is impressed with your with your items that you go out and buy as much as you are. So we got to check our ego. Our our finances um, they deserve to make sure that our ego is in check and that we're spending purposefully. Is your spending to inflate yourself, or is it to inflate the life that you actually want to live, the life by design? Is the spending very purposeful so that you can have the, the life that you want, not just the ego boost that we want? Now, there's nothing wrong with having a nicer car, a bigger house, extravagant vacations. Just check in as to the why behind these, making sure that it's actually in alignment with your values, and then go start putting the money away for it. You deserve it. In this market, you're working this hard. You deserve some of those things if that's what you want. Maybe what you want to do is invest into more um, investment properties or buy into the, the market center or an auxiliary business. But let's make sure that we're actually um, purposeful about every dollar that we spend. You're Again, you deserve to hold every single dollar accountable. Every dollar. Um, if you saw $5 like blowing down the sidewalk, chances are you'd run up and go grab it, right? And yet we spend $5 here, $5 there, we're not ever even thinking about it. We'll 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 push a little kid out of the way to go find that, that $5, 10 $20 bill running down the, the sidewalk, but then we'll blow that thing without a, even a thought. So we really want to change the habits of our spending, which is going to produce an incredibly big life for you, the one that you actually design. So finally... I am passionate about profit and running profitable businesses. I encourage you to join us in Profit Camp next week so that you can deepen the knowledge that you have on running profitable businesses and such by doing so allows you to have a life by design rather than just a life by default. So right now, I know that we've already dropped it in once. We're going to drop the, the Profit Camp registration into the chat box again, but I want to open this up and hear from from you. What questions do you have? What ahas do you have? How can I help you today in running a profitable business? So take yourself off mute. If you've got a question or a comment, let's see if we can't work on your, your life by design right now.
Anybody? Well, if you've been through Profit Camp, I'm going to encourage you to go through it again and again and again. Gary Keller says that we should go through Profit Camp, you know, six to eight times to really understand it because you're going to come away from there, not only with your profit goals, but also your uh, clarity on, on the profit and loss statement, how to read it, how to um, interrogate it, uh, how to look at what to cut versus what not to cut. You'll walk away from there with a plan that gives you that life by design. So will you be giving us the form? Not today, next week in Profit Camp, I will be um, providing that form to you all. Any other comments or questions? All right, then I'm going to assume. Wait, wait, I do. How long okay. is the, how long is, <laughs> so sorry. That's okay. Thank Excuse you. Me. How long is how long is the profit camp? It's three hours. That's it. Yep, that's it. Yep, ninety nine dollars, oh. three hours that could actually change your entire life. Yes. And it starts this next week. This next week, Tuesday. I I did not see the the. I tried to follow the link. I I couldn't follow the link to registration. Okay. Um, right there in the chat box, I see it says Genius Profit Camp launches Tuesday, 11 14. And there's a link right behind that. It says Events Cloud. Do you see that? Yes. That's it. Let me type it in. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Let this me take a picture of it. Questions. Um, is this a one day training? Yes, Jill, we answered that. Three hours, just three hours. What this. The suggested amount percentage to spend on education, seminars, and coaching. We're going to talk a lot about the budget model of, of where, based on the GCI that you're projecting for 2024, um, we're going to dig into that to see how much you should be spending in those areas. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Thank you. Well, my pleasure. I hope I see every single one of you next Tuesday. We're going to change some lives. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate you. Have a great week. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.